kid in at 10 years old in fifth grade when Michael Jordan was doing his thing. Oh, exactly. look at the great Michael Jordan. I was an adult when Michael Jordan <laughs> won his first championship. Beautiful wings if we accomplishing things. Pride straight laying low at the feet of the king. I need beautiful wings if we accomplishing things. Keep me in order. I get swayed by beautiful things. YouTube, we're back. Another reaction. This one's going to be fun, though. We are getting into Chris Broussard and Nick Wright debating Michael Jordan, LeBron James, the GOAT. You guys know from previous videos, I'm a huge MJ fan. I'm a Michael Jordan fan. I think he is still the GOAT, and I don't think it is even close. So I'm excited to get into this one. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. I don't like Nick Wright because of, uh, because of his stance with LeBron, and we're going to break this video down. So before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, continue to follow the page, continue to follow the journey. We give God the glory in every video that we do. So without further ado, here we go. Chris Broussard, Nick Wright, let's hear what you got. Says it's LeBron. He's bigger, stronger, and faster in a tougher era. So I don't think this is... All right, we're already stopping. Listen, LeBron is bigger. He's not tougher. And he might be faster. But Jordan, he played in a tougher era. He played more, more full seasons. LeBron takes rest days. Okay, that's strike one. And there's going to be a lot of strikes. So I, I just can't get it with this guy. And listen, the era that Jordan played in was tougher. I don't care what anybody says. They shoot better today. They definitely do. I mean, you see the percentages and stuff like that. They shoot better today, but they don't play defense. They played defense back in the day. Here we go. Going to end up a debate. And I think it's not coincidental that the people who are most adamant about it are people who grew up idolizing Michael Jordan. Bigger, stronger, faster, all in a tougher era, says Nick, as the GOAT debate rolls on on this Tuesday morning. NBA champion Antoine Walker with us now. Nick, though, I want to start with you. Also, too, let's point out something. That shot that Jordan made was in the NBA Finals, all right? The NBA Finals to lock out a team, all right, and to win it all. When's the last time LeBron made a game-winning shot in the Finals? He doesn't. He passes it off. Ray Allen saved his butt in that, in that one. Kyrie Irving was the one who hit the big shot. I think it was against Golden State. I forget what team it was, but I'm pretty sure it was Golden State. So, uh, LeBron is passing, especially in basketball. When you want to be that guy to finish it for your team, MJ all day, baby. Here we go. Is it just a matter of time before LeBron is viewed as the GOAT over Michael Jordan? Heck no. <clears throat> well, I think it will be, but I also think people have to be honest. And so I want to, Broussard and I got into this earlier in the show. All right, Nick Wright, you want to be honest? What is basketball all about? What is any sport all about? Winning. And I know people say, oh, you can't just do the chips because then Bill Russell, which I agree 100%. But when you're winning, you got the accolades, and you got the stats, and you play defense and offense, you're the GOAT. My man LeBron James is 4-6 and six in the finals. He has a losing record. How are you the GOAT when you have a losing record in the finals? Especially in a sport where you have the most control out of all the four main sports. Basketball, hockey, football. What am I forgetting? Football, basketball, hockey. What am I forgetting? Baseball. Nobody can watch the baseball anymore. So there are the four main sports in America, right? And out of all those sports, basketball, you have the biggest impact on that sport. There's five people on the court, and you play majority of the game, and you play offense and defense. Here we go. And Broussard said a few interesting things. He said, Nick, you're dealing with feelings, not facts. Yeah. And then he said something else interesting. Nick, you're dealing with hypotheticals. I, yeah. When it comes to Jordan, I don't have to deal with hypotheticals. The problem, Broussard, is you do. But because Jordan is a mythical creature in your mind, it, you just take the hypothetical. How is he a mythical creature when he was an actual person that played in the game? Come on, man. It's a given. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you know that Michael Jordan could have made a single NBA Finals, much less won a championship, if Phil Jackson never came into his life. In other words, do you... So now he's playing hypotheticals, right? He's just blaming Prusard for playing hypotheticals. But you can't do You can't even ask that question. So I, I, agree, I agree with Nick Wright in the sense of nobody can do hypotheticals. So when they say, oh, prime LeBron can beat a prime Jordan or vice versa, I hate that argument. The only way you can compare um, uh, eras is how did that specific player dominate that era? And was that more impressive than that other person dominated their era? And that's my argument. Jordan kept Hall of Famers from ever winning a championship. 
And he won pretty much six in a row. He retired for two years in between the three and three. LeBron, everybody is winning while LeBron is the championship or, or is in the lead. Everybody's winning the championship. Here we go. Do you know Michael Jordan could have overcome bad coaching? You don't. Yes. It, I, you believe he could have, but it's a hypothetical. But with Jordan, you allow yourself that. Do you know <laughs> that if Michael Jordan was stuck with a bad roster his whole career, he ever would have gotten out of round one, much less carried a team to the finals at age 23? He's literally playing hypotheticals to try and prove his point of not doing hypotheticals. You, you don't know that. It's a hypothetical because he never got out of round one until he had a Hall of Fame teammate. But you believe it. You just know it in your heart. So with Jordan, you allow hypotheticals. My favorite one from you is this. Oh, Jordan would have been a good three-point shooter if he wanted to be. As so that's fair. If Chris Broussard can't say that because I agree with Nick in the point of we can't do hypotheticals. I agree 100%. I agree 100%. Here we go. But we better not be saying, oh, LeBron would have dominated in Jordan's era because that's a hypothetical. We can't do it on the other side of the argument. Here we go. As if he just wanted to miss those shots. As if we're just going to ignore the fact that in his entire career, aside from the two years the line was moved in, he was a below average for the era three-point shooter. He's 28%. He didn't so even shoot three. Do you, so I will ask you, if Phil Jackson never comes into his life, if Scottie Pippen never comes into his life, does he ever even make a finals or win a championship? And could Michael Jordan have been Michael a good three-point shooter? My this whole argument is terrible because they're doing hypotheticals when they're not supposed to be doing hypotheticals. Let's talk about the stats. Let's talk about all this stuff. So if he brings up, a lot of people bring up, oh, uh, LeBron is about to be the, the leading scorer of all time. My man also played almost 20 years in the NBA. He better be up towards there if you're going to say he's the GOAT. I think it's more impressive when a player like Michael Jordan played 15 seasons, all right? He started late because he came out his, I think it was his junior year in college, and then he took two years off in his prime. Two years off in his prime, and he was still, I think he's like third or fourth now on the all-time list in scoring. But he's, he fills the stat sheets, and I already told you about the accolades. He was a ten-time scoring NBA in, in the. Uh, he was a ten-time scoring champion in the NBA, and that's out of fifteen seasons. That's crazy, crazy. But it's not all just about scoring. You got to win, right? And then you also got to do other stuff. And he was an, also a Defensive Player of the Year. So my man is playing almost every game, every single season, and he's playing both sides of the ball. Okay, so who's tougher? Michael Jordan created Scottie Pippen. Real talk. Great. I okay. mean, if Scottie Pippen had not played alongside Michael Jordan, witnessed his work ethic in practice, learn how to win from... That's the other thing, too. People say LeBron, LeBron makes his teammates better, which I don't agree with. You look at Westbrook, what just happened with Westbrook. Now he's coming at LeBron. You look at Kevin Love, he fell off the cliff. You can't really say Chris Boss because he had, he had a uh, medical issue. The only one that really really improved, and I don't even know if he really improved. He might have just stayed the same, was Dwayne Wade. Uh, they were a nice duo down in Miami. But even, even Kyrie took a little bit of a backseat. Okay? AD, he was good the first year in the bubble when nobody was really caring about basketball. But now he's injured. He doesn't look as good. They didn't even make the playoffs this past year. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. I agree with the point where MJ made uh, his teammates better. Because when you are the shooter and the guy, it lets everybody else do what they need to do. They're the role players. They do what they need to do. Um, Scottie Pippen averaged, excuse me, Scottie Pippen averaged under 20 points a season, even in the playoffs, okay? Look at all the people that uh, LeBron had that averaged over 20 points in the playoffs and a season. So, And they say that Jordan had more help. Uh-huh. From Michael Jordan, you could see it if you were young, maybe in diapers when this was happening, but you could watch <laughs> Scottie Pippen's growth. Scottie Pippen was to Michael Jordan what Chris Middleton is to Giannis. All right? Yeah. That's it, except that Jordan was the go to guy, not Middleton. All right? Not, you know, as Middleton is for Milwaukee. That's it. And so nobody's going to sit here and say, man, what would Giannis have done if he had never teamed up with Chris Middleton? That's the equivalent of what you're saying, Nick. And let me say this quickly, because no. I, I think you want to go back before I get to my main point. I, my childhood basketball idols were Dr. J and Magic Johnson. 
I, I, didn't, I wasn't some kid in at 10 years old in fifth grade when Michael Jordan was doing his thing. Oh, exactly. look at the great Michael Jordan. I was an adult when Michael Jordan <laughs> won his first championship. So this is not about me just reminiscing about when I was in the seventh grade. All right? And I put Jordan ahead of both of my childhood idols. Yep. What I'll say is this. Because he's living in reality, okay? The facts are the facts. The facts are the facts. The problem, too, is everybody wants the new best thing. And I think that's what's happening with LeBron. And also the media pushes him big time. But let's let's look at the facts. It's It's been over, in my opinion. But then this season just solidified it for me. There we go. And I, I think you want to get back. The Cleveland Cavaliers had LeBron James for 11 healthy seasons. Wow. He delivered one championship. The Chicago Bulls had Michael Jordan for 11 healthy seasons. He delivered six. Crazy. Six. We've had three three-peats yep. since Bill Russell walked away. There it is. Done. It's finished. Right there. I think that's his best point right there. 11 seasons each and six championships or one or one. Listen. And they'll go, oh, LeBron didn't have a good, he didn't have a good roster when he was in Cleveland, blah, 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 all that. But then he had to go somewhere else, and then he had to come back, and now he's in L.A., and he makes his own teams. He plays GM. Guys, come on, come on. People say Jordan gets all the excuses, but I hear just as many excuses for LeBron. So let's actually look at the stats. Let's look at all the accolades. Let's look at all the championships. Unreal, unreal. And then the intangibles that you can't look at, or you can't put down on a piece of paper. Jordan had that killer instinct. He played defense. All those things. Come on now. Michael Jordan delivered two of them. And Michael yes. Jordan has gotten to the point where he is, and, and yeah, mythical. He's mythical because what he did in reality was so great. And just like Babe Ruth and just like Muhammad yeah. Ali. And for mm -hmm. someone to come along and surpass Michael Jordan as the GOAT, as great and phenomenal as LeBron is, it is going to take even more than what LeBron yep. has done for yep. the, the society to say, you know what? He's past Jordan. We just... I want to stop there for a second because he hit it on the head. And I do not like when people say this. And I'm the biggest Jordan uh, fan. I don't like when people say there will never be another Michael Jordan because... If somebody comes in the league and wins 10 out of 10 times and then retires, they're going to be the greatest of all time because, and they got to be the leader of the team. It can't be like a Robert Ory that's a role player that hits big shots, but he's not really the guy. So, but I don't like when people say that because you never know. There might be, you know what I mean? So, but I like what he's saying here. For somebody to surpass, they got to do something like that where they win 9 out of 10 or 9 out of 13 or whatever it may be. And they're just killing it on the stat sheet. They play both sides of the ball. So that can happen. And there's some players that are coming up that you never know. Here we go. This had on Austin, the, the Daytona 500 winner, Twine. Mm -hmm. And this a young kid in his 20s. He said Jordan's the GOAT. Who knows how much he actually got to watch Michael Jordan? <laughs> no, he's not been brainwashed. He's been brainwashed it, it, by Jordan the media. has become iconic. Jordan has become an iconic figure because of what he did. And all, this is my last mm. thing. All the polls show it. Even yep. the millennials, the 18 to 35 year olds, when so ESPN can't. polled them in 2020, Twan, 60. You hear Nick's voice? He is defeated. He is defeated. Here we go. 6% of them said Jordan is the GOAT. I mean, it's case closed. LeBron's number two. What's wrong with number two? Yeah. Second best player to ever <laughs> lace up sneakers. But Jordan's number one. I got him. I got him. Actually, sorry. I got him outside of the top five. I got him number six. And I'll put my top five in the comments below. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Make sure you put that down there. There we go. Please. Jordan is number one, Chris. But I want to. I want to start with Nick. Nick, you said a couple of interesting points to me. You said that it was a tougher era. Um, I think yeah. you got to reevaluate that and go look at what Michael had to go through in the Eastern Conference to get to the finals. Much more tougher than what LeBron had to go through. Yes. The yeah. heat. In the 80s, the not in the 90s. No, in the 90s. That 97, 96, 97, 98, 97, 98 teams, the two championships he won, uh, the last two championships, that were very difficult yep. for him to have to go through that. Yep. And then you said the eye test. Now, if you want to go with the eye test, is Michael Jordan real easy? Yes. I bet. Come on. 
And this is a basketball, this is an actual basketball player, Antoine Walker, all right? He played during this era. I, he might have been with both. Let me know in the comments if he played with both. I don't have it off, off the top of my head. But he, play, he was kind of in that era, too, where he played in 90s, 2000s. So he knows, he knows what he's talking about, and he's speaking some facts right now. LeBron played some easy East Coast. His Eastern Conference was easy when he was with the Heat, the Cavaliers. I will say that the West Coast was tough, and, that, and it shows because he couldn't win. He was 4-6. and six. There we go. Better clutch uh, performer with, for game-winning shots. But he's yeah. not. If he gets fouled, oh, if he gets fouled late in the games, he's going to make his free throws That's true. Yeah. with the game on the line. Good point, Tony. And nobody can score the basketball like Michael scores. Yeah. This guy, and, and I've been very fortunate, Nick. I was very fortunate. I came in the league in 1996. Of course. Yep. I got a chance play to go play against Michael, the 96-97 Michael, the 97-98 Michael, where he can get 30 just from shooting fadeaways. So he never had to shoot threes. That wasn't in his game that had to shoot threes. Exactly. He's going to get to the foul line yep. 10 to 15 times, oh and God. he's going to be able to make fadeaways. I've seen him get 30 just shooting jump shots, mid-range jump shots. Of course. So the access tells you that. The eye test just tells you that Michael Jordan is the best. A better defender. He guards yeah. his man night in I, and night I out. I reject that, but that's fine. What? <laughs> oh, of course you do. Of course you do. How do you reject it? My man won a defensive player of the year, and not just that. Watch his tape. My man was bashing Patrick Ewing at six foot six, and Ewing's what, seven foot, seven foot one? And then his steals, his lockdown defense. Everybody wants to bring up the Iverson clip. Okay, in his 15 year career, he gets crossed every once. That's fine. That's fine. That means he's playing tough defense. A lot of these guys just today, they stand around because they don't want to get slammed on or they don't want to get crossed up. I'd much rather have a player who says, you know what? I'm taking your best player and I'm guarding him day in and day out. Here we go. You, you like LeBron because he runs on the break and blocks shots from behind. And I'm not taking that from LeBron. That's great hustle. He, he, makes, he made a great, unbelievable block to save the finals for them. Jordan was third best defender on his own team. Uh, no, Jordan was third best defender on his own team, down. Antoine. No. That's and Rodman true. and Pippen were better defenders, and you know it. That's not when true. You were there. You Did know Pippen. it. Ron Harper was right there with him. Rodman and Pippen were the better defenders. And you guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose it on some there. of these things. Did Pippen I am win? Not was Pippen saying, ever defensive player I, of the year? I, I, no, be, again, you keep going to all oh, these things oh, that you in the media <laughs> voted on because you guys were facts. all you guys were all brainwashed. But hold on a second. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me throw Go something ahead. else in there. You talk about Phil Jackson. And Michael couldn't win without Phil. How about I, if Jerry Krause decided to let do what good organizations do and allow Michael Scotty and those guys to finish it out? How agree. many titles do you think? I they agree. would have they at least got yep. two more titles. Yep. At least two more titles. Sure. Uh, except Michael got burned down and repeatedly knowledge. and didn't have the stamina for Knowledge! It. Uh, yeah, except, knowledge. except for all the times he quit. <laughs> no, except, listen. Except all the times he quit. Come on. That, hold on, hold on. I take offense to that because here's the thing. Jordan, Jordan never quit midseason, okay? He might have got burned out, and that's fine. He took a break, okay? And then he came back, and what did he do? He killed it. My man LeBron quits midseason. Matter of fact, he quits mid-game. He's done it. He's done it. I'd much rather have a player give me all 82 games and then kill it in the playoffs, win a championship, and then after the season's done say, hey, you know what, I need to take a little bit of a break. Much rather do that than have somebody who comes in and says, oh, yeah, I'm going to give you 82 games. Now I need a rest day. Now I need another rest day. You know what? I'm not even going to finish this game because it's already over. What kind of winner is that? What kind of goat is that? Come on. Come on. Listen, I agree. If Michael hey. never quit and Michael never lost, he would have always won. But hold on. I did not say he couldn't win without Phil. I'm saying you can't say when I bring up LeBron arguments that that's a hypothetical and then, just, and then just give Jordan the benefit of the doubt on all the hypotheticals. It is a fact that he never won a playoff series without Scottie Pippen. It is a fact that he never made the finals without Phil Jackson. Those are facts. And this idea that he, it, it, the, I know he didn't need to shoot threes, but he did shoot them and he was bad at. He was bad at threes, who cares? Does that, is that really a big deal? LeBron is bad at shooting foul shots. Nobody holds that again. You know what I mean? It's uh, When you're talking about the GOAT, it doesn't really matter. If it was a center, are we going to be mad that he wasn't able to shoot threes? What is he talking about? And Bruce Sarge is like, he had no weaknesses. So what about three-point shooting? Oh, he would have been good at it if he wanted to be. What it is, wasn't a weakness. What is, what, 
When, was he betting that's the, the thing. unders? When he played, Unless he was betting the unders, when he, played, when he shot the ball, he wanted to make it. Uh-huh. Michael well, Jordan had the make. same three. You, you can go well, tip Michael Jordan had the say, same. Well, LeBron's not a great free throw shooter. You can go tip and tap. LeBron's right. not a great free throw shooter. I don't say Michael's he has a great no free throw shooter. It's, right. It goes, it goes tip and tap. Michael Jordan is his buddy. Go, They're go not Bruce perfect, said. but Jordan listen, had the same. There's nothing wrong with LeBron James ahead, being the second best player to ever play the game. I, I give him his flowers. LeBron James <laughs> is unbelievable. But I want to give him his flowers. But the pressure that he had to come into the league in and to do what he's done and to lead his game as the second best player to ever play the game holds his own value. It probably won't be another player right. with that type of have that much pressure on him be able to do what he did yeah. but he's not the goat michael jordan's the goat and you saw that with the standing ovation when they gave him he was oh, the last person go. call and the oh standing ovation God. he got in cleveland that lets you know we're doing who's the crowd goat. pop like he's john <laughs> cena that's what i'm talking about the i that is impressive though i didn't know it was in cleveland so for jordan to get that standing o in cleveland we go. Iconic figure. Here's the thing, Nick. You brought up three-point shooting. He had the same percentage as Kobe from three. We never looked at Kobe as a, a weakness from three-point three shooting. Jordan had the same percentage. He wasn't great, but he wasn't, it wasn't like a weakness. And here's the I one know. thing you got to overcome, Nick. And I'll give you it's subjective. But Michael Jordan had the prettiest most aesthetically pleasing, most graceful game oh that we've ever seen. He did. That's actually a great point, though. I know it's that that's opinionated, and I'll, I'll be fair with that. But if you look at the stuff that he could do anywhere and at any time in the game, and Jordan also made a game within the game, he purposely would want to lock down their best player, and then he also wanted to dunk on the big man of every single team, at least early in his career. And I think that makes it even more impressive that uh, Nick Wright kind of even touches on that point, and it kind of helps the Jordan argument. He got bored, burnt out. Because he, he did everything that you could possibly do in the game. He could do everything. Then he went to baseball. He was like, you know what? Let me try another sport. This is how good I am of an athlete. So, And then you can say he was terrible at baseball. But that doesn't really matter because it's not basketball. So here we go. That's part of it. Like, I mean, I, and I'm keeping it real. Honestly, that is why, that is one reason people fell in love with his game. Because it looked so good. Yeah. Just like Muhammad yeah. Ali. Muhammad yeah. Ali was the most Great graceful point heavyweight we ever saw and that is a part of the greatness I mean, and the lure age. that people have for him yeah. lebron's game doesn't look Brown as good as jordan's and that's why that's gracefulness me. i'm keeping it real with you check oh. all right guys that's chris Broussard and my man nick wright i listen i'll give him props though at least he sticks by his guy and he and he i mean he's obviously against a lot of people that are against him so i'll give him props there but guys when you look at the tape in my opinion, it's not even close. Like I said, I have a five, I have five players in front of LeBron. I don't get I don't get stuck in the media hype. I don't get stuck in what other people are pushing. I get stuck in actual basketball, watching the game, and seeing what people have done in their eras. And listen, I got five ahead of them. MJ is my GOAT. And then the other four, you're going to have to look in the comments. You're going to have to like and subscribe. So check it out. There's going to be a lot more sports videos coming. Make sure to give me recommendations of what other videos I should check out. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, continue to follow the page, continue to follow the journey. We give God the glory in every video that we do. Guys, the sports debates are so much fun. I have so much fun with them. And it's just, it's a blast. And a lot of it is opinionated. But this one, oh man, it's tough. Because I just, I, I, don't, I don't see the opinion for LeBron. So, but God bless. Catch you on the next video.